Hi students, this is Satish Kumar. So in this video lecture, we will be trying to see the case three of two point uh, array sources. The case three is uh, the array of two point sources with currents of unequal amplitude and any phase difference. Okay, so the amplitudes of the currents that we are applying to the antennas are of different amplitude and also any phase here we are not saying they are of equal phase or opposite phase equal phase means phase difference is zero opposite phase is uh, phase difference is 180 but other than these two values let us take that particular any phase is let's say some alpha okay that alpha can be anything if alpha is zero it is for the case of broadside array case if alpha is 180 it is for the case of end fire array case but if they are not those two values then we can say it is of any phase difference okay so that any phase is let's say is with alpha right now let us see the diagram okay i'll be slightly modified the diagram okay intentionally okay because i said uh, the diagram can be shifted version okay previously at the origin okay we took uh, this is o it is origin okay this is origin but um, to the to this side i took uh, the first source and uh, right hand side of the origin i took the second course but now at the origin itself i took one of the antenna array sources and other is at a distance of d from the origin it doesn't make any difference okay this this is same as the previous right and uh, when you apply a current of uh, amplitude different okay which is let's say i1 okay and e power either you can take minus j psi by 2 or i said you can also take it as j0 this is the way i'm applying okay what happens uh, uh, to the second one let us see now and the other amplitude is let's say i2 here both are not equal if they are equal you can say i1 is equal to i0 i2 is also equal to i0 okay but we are taking the values differently that means the amplitudes of the phases, the fields that we are also going to get here is different at a far distant point, right? I2 into E power J psi. Okay, what ultimately that we have to get is the phase difference must be psi. Okay, so that is E power J psi, psi minus zero is zero. Sorry, pi psi minus zero is psi. Okay, you will be getting the total phase difference which is equal to psi. But along with this, general phase shift between the two antenna array elements there will be another phase shift okay along with this you will be applying some more value which is alpha okay so that alpha should also be considered here okay because you are applying the currents of e unequal amplitudes and any phase difference okay so that any phase here we are denoting it by alpha right so let us now see uh, what will how we'll be finding the total electric field intensity at a far distant point right okay so for that uh, let us consider let us consider the field due to source one point source one at a far distant point at a far distant point is is e1 okay and e2 is the field at point p which is far distant point due to due to source 2 due to source 2 right okay so now what is e1 okay so e1 will be equal to okay i'll be calling uh, instead of e01 i'll be calling the amplitude is e1 itself e power instead of minus j psi by 2 here i'll be just uh, for my convenience i'll be taking it as e power j0 if you take i said already minus j psi by 2 also you will get the same thing but to get it very easily i'm doing like this and e2 will be equal to it is e2 into e power j psi 
So overall, we are going to get the phase difference uh, of psi minus zero, which is psi, okay? But that psi we have already derived in both the cases, which is beta d cos theta, okay? Beta d cos theta. So either you can place that alpha, which is an extra phase difference like this here, psi plus alpha, else, because anyway, psi will be here equal to beta d cos theta. You can add that alpha here itself. Okay, both are same. Psi plus alpha, psi equal to beta d cos theta plus alpha. Psi plus alpha means alpha plus, plus means that only, beta d cos theta plus alpha. Both will be same. It doesn't make any difference, right? So now I, I have to find out the total electric field intensity. I'm not doing all the basic uh, things that we have done for both the cases. I'll be directly finding out the total field, total field at a far distant point, far distant point, right? That point we called it as P, right? So that we did, let us denote it by ET, which is equal to E1 plus E2. Okay, but amplitudes of this E1 and E2, let us take that amplitudes as we know already different. Okay, those amplitudes are different. And also let us consider E1 is greater than two. This is also my assumption. Okay, so let E1 is greater than E2. Okay, then E1 will be equal to as we know very well that E1 is equal to E1, E power J is one anyway, E power J zero is one. And E2 will be, you can take it as this, this in place of this E zero one also, but just uh, we can take uh, E1 equal to E1 and E2 equal to e, E2, okay? You can take like that, no issue. E2 into E power J psi, okay? So now you can take E1 common here, Okay, I, I finally require how to find out the radiation pattern. Okay, whether by you by simplifying it, whether we can get any sine or cos function or not. Uh, if we get like that, we can able to draw the radiation pattern. Otherwise, uh, it's very difficult for us to draw the radiation pattern, right? So take E1 common, this is one plus E2 by E1 into E power J psi into e power j psi this is your total electric field intensity right let this e2 by e1 ratio is equal to some constant k okay some constant k then what we can write this as therefore e t will be equal to e1 into 1 plus k into e power j psi Okay, so this is, okay, I'm not even writing this psi is equal to beta d cos theta plus alpha because uh, whether we can able to get simplified this or not. Okay, let us first check this. Okay, the, after that, if it is going to get simplified either in any of the trigonometrical forms, they can we, then we can able to write psi equal to beta d cos theta plus alpha. Otherwise, let us leave like that, okay. Now we can also expand this further as E1 into one plus some K into, this is uh, cos psi plus J sine psi. Okay, you can expand it further. You can write the real part as one plus K cos psi plus J K sine psi. Okay, so that's it. We cannot further simplify. There is no need to write psi equal to beta d cos theta plus alpha and we no need to find out the normalized component because we are not going to further simplify this. This is because it's a complex number. It's a complex value. Okay, so what we can do further is, what we can do further is we can get the magnitude and phase magnitude and phase of this total electric field intensity, which is equal to E1, you keep it as it is, which is under root of one plus K cos psi whole square plus K sine psi whole square. 
this is its magnitude and phase of this is let's say denoted by phi or you can also call it as angle of et which is equal to uh, tan inverse of because in both the cases e1 will be present uh, that will be getting cancelled tan inverse of y y which is uh, k sin psi by 1 plus k cos psi okay you cannot do anything further okay we are just calculating the magnitude and uh, phase okay from this by applying because from the magnitude and phase we can able to draw the radiation pattern but what is the problem here is psi is it equal to beta d cos theta plus alpha and alpha value we don't know and if you substitute in it and it's even if you take the square root of it it's not going to be simplified anyway that's the reason okay we'll be leaving this particular uh, uh, case okay which is a two point arrays of uh, amplitude current amplitudes which are unequal and also any phase okay so for this particular case we cannot able to draw the radiation pattern okay by using this particular analysis okay so because this is going to become complex very much complex as we substitute the value of psi that's the reason okay so we will be stopping here itself okay so that's it about this case okay we have now completed all the three cases of two point rs of two point rs next instead of going to three point and four point five point like that we directly go to an endpoint uniform array for this endpoint uniform array we will try to find out the array factor for it okay array factor for it and by finding out the array factor for it we can able to see the cases of broadside array as well as end fire array case okay these analysis is very very complex we need to see a lot of uh, uh, angles in this broadside array case and end fire array case and then we can check it for four point arrays and we can also extend it for eight point arrays for four point arrays it will become slightly easy but when you go to eight element array the complexity of, of uh, drawing the radiation pattern by using this particular uh, analysis angle analysis is going to be very very complex that's the reason for eight element array we go for, to draw the radiation pattern of eight element array we go for a method called multiplication pattern by using this multiplication pattern or pattern multiplication we can able to draw the radiation pattern in a very simple way okay so we will see that multiplication pattern at later stages first our target is to find the array factor for n element array and then we have to check it for broadside array case and end fire array case okay then we have to see the differences between broadside array case and end fire array case also right so i hope you like these uh, video lectures if you really like uh, my videos please uh, subscribe my channel thank you very much